It's like, oh, he's like always like upbeat, fun, seemingly like he's like, you know, out of his totally. mind, which is why I like this cat. And then I listen, I'm like, oh man, like, yeah, life is like. I'm super depressed silly. usually, super depressed and uh, anxious and, uh, and um, yeah, I got a lot of emotional problems. <laughs> We are here tonight with Bite Marks slash Colin Ambulance. Hello. How, how do you do and such? I am well. That's great. Have you been uh, fighting crocodiles in the swamps lately? No, I just like blending in. Uh, yeah, it's, like a, it's private in here. Yeah. It's very foresty environment indeed. It's, uh, you know, the less skin that shows, the more erotic. You know, like my, my presence can, can be, you know. It, it, that was a concern, you know. Like, <laughs> I, oftentimes I appear on camera and the audience is just constantly masturbating or fucking each other. But to have Colin Ambulance on with Count Cat on Castle Cat is basically, even if we're fully clothed, you can see little skin, that's basically pornography. I know a lot of people that do webcams and stuff too. That's cool. I didn't know that you were doing that. Well, that's what this is, essentially. Great. It's a great way of uh, showing your body without having to worry about touching a stranger. Well, maybe touch their hearts. Touch their hearts. Yes. And within their heart is where you know, they orgasm. The heart is the biggest erogenous zone. So, so put your fingers in there. I don't know. My thousand <laughs> ex-wives and husbands tell me I don't have one. So. Hey, Moose City, Kawabungo. Tell us about... Wait, we actually have the album here. So nobody brings... Well, it's a single. Nobody brings a full album full of one song. Well, that I've got a full album too. White marks. So canned canned peacock, which is not what it says on there, but well, canned peacock's the name of the record. So how how is canned peacock? Does it taste good? <laughs> it's uh yeah, it's good. It's a uh, just a mix of a, it's just a collection of like a bunch of stuff off of my off of my singles I released on Bandcamp before that, which was like twenty something singles. Uh, just the best of the best. And then I've got I've got a new record I'm about to record right now. I've got about. 22, 24 songs written for it already. That's way more than, like, people often tell me, like, I have seven songs on this album. Like, that's not an album, that's just one that's extra an song from an EP. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I, I make a lot of music a lot of the time. It's, I guess sometimes I just have spurts. Spurts, sometimes they hurt. Yes, and sometimes it makes the, makes the outfit a little crusty. I like that uh, the bite, bite marks listening, it's very, it's like, you get to like uh, the comedic value of com Colin Ambulance mixed with it. It's kind of like emotional too. It seems kind of like deep, even if it is like. It, it, I feel like songs are either silly or sad. <laughs> songs are sad or silly. Yeah. 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 It's, it's a good combination, which is not you don't you don't normally see that. Or uh, you know, I just uh, yeah, you know, but I try to. When they I try to overcome them because I have to go out and have to, it's weird to be like a like a somebody. You've, afraid of being around people but also being a performer it's uh it, it sucks well it's a weird combo and it, it keeps me uh kind of getting out of the house and stuff but i also work a lot too so i work with Aaron. oh <clears throat> yes the I, business. yes no no that we manage a building oh the building business yes we manage a building downtown it's a big thirteen thousand square foot uh 110 year old warehouse we do like events and parties and productions and stuff but that's that's my job. You want to talk about music? Let's talk about music. Let's talk about <laughs> music. So you play you play many instruments too, don't you? Um, some of them better than others. Yeah. How long have you? What what got you started in music in general? Okay, in general, well, uh, my dad was really into music, and um, when I was when I was uh, like about three years old, um, I, he let me stay up to watch uh, "Give Me Shelter," the Rolling Stones, you know, documentary. Like we played at Altamont and. Uh, where those guy, the guy got killed and stuff. I've seen that. Yeah. But uh, it was like three or four, and like my dad was like, I was like, who's this ugly lady on the stage? It's it's so popular, and like uh, my dad's like, that's Mick Jagger. See that symbol on his chest? That's a Leo. He's a Leo like you. And I took that as like, well, he's like from the same planet as me. I can do that. And my dad will think I'm cool. So I instantly started a imaginary band called the Dead Skulls, and I had that for a while. So, but uh, but then like uh, you know, I went through my teenage years. My dad was really into music, and I wanted to be a musician. So I could. My dad will think I was a cool guy. 
and um, he, and uh, when I was 13, I was saving up money to buy a drum set, and then I got sick of waiting. So I said, "How much? Can, what can I get with what I have?" And I got a guitar, and I was like, "Fucking guitar!" Bleh. But I learned guitar. I had two lessons, and then the rest of it, I just learned. I learned Metallica, Master of Puppets, Tablature book. Then Metallica put out the Black album, so I was done with Metallica forever. Um, <laughs> and and uh, then I learned how to play. Uh, learned how to play by ear to. Uh, Supervised Big Muff, Mud Honey record, and uh, and Black Flag's first four, four years, and that great, was like that was around one. yeah, I was around like uh, maybe 14, 15 years old, and then I just kind of went from there. I played in my first band, it was called the Necrophiles back in when I was I've 15. Heard of that, I feel like sound familiar. Could be. I mean, it might be a popular name for people to name their bands around that age. Like, Probably. how many bands are called Toxic Shock? As soon as they find out about you know, they read that out in like a tampon tampon box, you know. I thought uh, that was like a long lost. Toxic shock. Well, um, but then I played in a bunch of bands. Like I played in, a, I played in a shit, shit little bands. So thirty is pretty early. So you've basically been a musician basically your entire life. Well, or, or, or preparing to be one, I guess. Uh, preparing to make that big bad decision. You know, yeah, <laughs> like, cool. how much do you want to spend on your career? Yeah, it's <laughs> funny. I had uh, one of my friends back in Trotilini uh, three thousand years ago. He was going to be drummer. Same thing. He's like, it's a bass guitar from Circuit City is much cheaper. Yeah, yeah. I've worked at two guitar centers too, but I do have a soul. Um, I used to help people steal. Yeah. <laughs> Best deal in town. I wish I would have known. If I could, if I could theory. afford, if I could afford even with, if I could afford to buy anything there, like with my, even with my employee discount, it shows how much they pay people. But um, anyways, that was like Robin Hood thing. So with bite marks, how the, when did you start with bite marks, and how long? Uh, were you doing anything electronic before then? No, there's actually kind of like a it's just kind of a new newer thing for me. I've been doing bite marks for about going on around three years. I was playing in a couple other bands. I was in a band called Cardboard Lamb that went about eight years. Um, Cardboard Lamb. Yeah, it was like a it, it really wire inspired um, their post punk band. We broke up on the record during recording our second record. Like I was really into the Screamers, and I was like I want to do a Screamers band, you know, like and. Uh, I, and that's what kind of got me mostly inspired that and like old like uh, like early tuxedo moon and um you know uh, another no wave and, and electronic minimal electronic bands so so this isn't live then no oh, okay cool god damn it no. like i was I felt really bad <laughs> no we don't do that shit because we make all sorts of mistakes like the body of tom that i possess sometimes his stupid human accents start coming out and people are like wait a minute this guy's a phony and then you know we start losing all three viewers and then my producer called me up psychically and he's like you're fired and i'm like you haven't fucking paid any of us and he's like well none of this exists anyway like also like you know, bands like The Crisis and um, early Death in June. And I guess I listen to a lot of dark music, even though my stuff kind of comes out maybe a little silly. But uh, but I think that there's, there's I mean, I'm an old death rocker. Like I, uh, I started a band called Cinema Strange back in high school that became a pretty big like death rock goth band. You used to have a keyboard player on Bite Marks for a while. Yeah, yeah, I had, uh, I had Rachel for, for a minute. Uh, she's playing with my friend Sunil now. Um, so you didn't kill her? No, I didn't. All right. Rumor, rumor, like kill, uh, kill people, kill, kill people with kindness. Ah. Kindness is the name of my baseball bat. Just kidding. This is getting. I gotta comb this out. It's getting clumpy. Does it make me look fluffy? It's catnip. Catnip fever. Oh. Sorry, skipping. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Little, little carry now that's getting in the webcam area there. <laughs> It's like, we, I'm just a regular guy. I didn't think this was going to happen, but it certainly did. Welcome Listen to this to penthouse Castle forum. Cats here tonight. <laughs> We're going to get in the depths of the hairy, hairy... Elbow deep. How do you feel when you perform? Is it like a invocation experience? Do you feel better or worse typically when you perform, or just always depend? Um, usually uh, anxious, nervous, sometimes mad. Uh, like... Uh, I've had some shows where like I've got where people didn't pay attention to their set times and I got bumped off at the end so like I've gotten worst. pretty pissed off. I've had uh, I've had some shows where I've thrown a little tantrum. <laughs> uh uh but uh but not too many times like I'm I'm pretty professional about that. Music's the only thing I'm really professional about. It's the only thing that really matters to me. It should matter to me other things that, you know, actually I could make money with other than music. Nonsense. But, music is the essence of existence. It's a great way to spend form. money. Yeah. But uh, but it's a good outlet. Um, like I, 
yeah, it's just really nervous. I get like diarrhea mouth before and talk too much. And then I play, play the show and then afterwards I'm just sweaty and quiet. Oh no, I still talk too much afterwards, you know, and selling merch. Um, I just played the Red with the other night. It was a good show with Flesh and, and uh, Terminal A. Oh yeah, Flesh. Yeah, the, the, the Flesh, is, Fle Fle Flesh is supposed to. There's actually supposed to be on the show, but I, I got a, I got a message. Um, nice guys. Ian, yeah, they're awesome. We yeah. played with them in New York uh, a few years ago. Yeah, so I saw them. Saw them. I got to know them like the last couple times they came through. Um, yeah, they're they're nice, nice chaps. So I've got my meds. Sorry to hear if it's like a painful experience. Like I didn't realize how like. No, no, it just cost me a little bit to get out of the house. Is all. <laughs> I get some shutdowns sometimes, but um, I've also got narcolepsy too, which is uh, which is another uh, it's it's another um, another issue, you know, leaving the house. If you ever woken up like getting you know robbed or beaten up or putting handcuffs on you or just like somebody just fucking with you, you know, like excuse my French, yeah, my mom's French Canadian. Um, uh, excuse his French Canadian. Uh, I should wash my tongue a little bit more, but. Um, but yeah, it's it's a uh, it's really uh it's really it's a really bad feeling and also something you never want to have happen. So um, that's another reason why I don't drive. I drove my last car off of a cliff uh, back in two thousand four. Um, what what happened? You fell asleep. Basically? Yeah, I was sleeping for about thirty eight miles. Uh, hey, that's that's pretty good. That's not like a record. No, to if me. you add all my, my my miles together that I've, that I've that I've driven sleeping, uh, that's like well over a thousand. That's not even exaggerating. Like, uh, and even since then, I've been like a limo driver. I've driven five ton trucks for productions, big things. Um, but when I'm awake, I'm a great driver. Um, and when I'm asleep, I'm still better than a couple people I know. Uh, I believe it. The people, especially Los Angeles, people are terrible drivers. But yeah, I went off a cliff. It was. Uh, it was. You, you were know, in the car when you went off. Cliff? I was driving. Well, I was sleeping. You didn't but jump was, off. Was, uh, no, it was. Uh, it was. I had uh, my passenger was asleep too. She had drank a lot of booze, and I was trying to get her home, but she couldn't tell me where she lived. So I said, "Okay, you can call your husband tomorrow." And uh, so I had to drive up. I was very tired. I drove up to. Uh, I was living in Ventura at the time, and uh, I had to go from Hollywood. I was playing this place called Qtopia. It was right next to like where Museum of Death is now. But um, right. anyways, but like I dropped her car off at the uh, at the, the Gower Gulch Denny's, so it would be fine overnight. And then uh, then I started driving up, and I uh, fell asleep. I guess right getting right on the freeway in Hollywood, and um, then I woke up going right off the side of the Canoe Parade in Camarillo, and um, so like those couple seconds, so, you know, that was like half an hour's worth of memory. Uh, were you injured? Was the car totaled? So, no, the car was totaled. Yeah, uh, both of us were fine. I think because uh, you know, like we're drunk drivers, don't get injured. Like in yeah, your muscles are gonna lose. Because yeah, you're I was just too. I just like woke woke up. I saw the freeway drop out, the headlights you know go off, and then I'm just like in midair. I was like trying to turn back to the, the car's like the wheels are, like. <laughs> it's not totally. <laughs> that's exactly. It's like <laughs> try the emergency brake. Um, you should drive in Trotty Lane. You get way better traction driving through the air. Most most of us have like uh, carriages with magic carpets attached to it. It's like the traction's much better in the air. I've seen the I've seen the pamphlets. The pamphlets. Uh, I, um, but, uh, I, 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 I've had a suspended license for like nine years too. Or, no. Let's talk about Ken Pika. That's your your first album. That's yeah. That's the first full album. Yeah, I've got a few EPs and I've got a, a bunch of singles, like uh, like digital singles on the on Bandcamp. Um, Bandcamp, but no, it's Bite Marks with an X. One dot Bandcamp dot com. There's plenty of stuff on there. But, uh, but the Ken Peacock, that record, is on Spotify and all those other sites. And uh, I've also got another EP called uh, Secret Admirer and another single called, uh, it's, it's a two-song single called uh, Elevator Action and The Velvet Choker. So when you're write, what's your writing process like? Do you, does it kind of come out like in short spurts or do you take your time on it or is it different each it's, time? It's it's weird. I got these phases where like um like I'll have I'll have like illustration phase, like Photoshop, digital artwork phase, uh, writing like like lyric phase, and music phase, and uh, like and I don't really control when those phases start or stop. It's just like when one starts, I can't do any of the other things very well. That's good. Though. Uh, that's, but that's I, so I have to focus be. on gotta make best use of it and uh, and try to be productive. Um, sometimes those phases last a long time. Sometimes they don't. Like if I'm in a like a writing phase, like don't ask me to do any do any illustration for you <laughs> or, or, uh, or or make any music. But uh, but I still will try. But um, but oh. yeah, I mean I did a, I did a, I had a phase a couple of years ago where like I did 
55 songs, wrote and recorded 55 songs in uh, about 40 days. They're not all great, but they're all pretty good. It's pretty good. That was before Can't bite marks, damn though. Impressive. That's pretty, yeah. Yeah, I've I, got I've got a pre bite marks two two pre bite marks like sort of collections of like uh, just like weird stuff I never released. Uh, that's on Bandcamp as well. Someday you'll have to do like a thirty five pound box set of like your whole discography. Right. Yeah. And that'll just be like the flash drives that comes on. Right, and then I just have the audience tell me like which ones are which ones are worth skipping to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've also added in some of your artwork because I really dig your artwork. Your Thank illustration you. work is really cool too. Thanks. I've got uh, some, I'm lucky enough to have uh, some people that are big collectors. I've got collectors in all over the place. There's, one of my biggest collectors is in Israel. He's the Israeli guy. He's um, he's the grandson of the guy who started Israel with David Ben-Gurion. Um, I was raised Catholic. So that's where the Christian Sickness part came out of it. Sorry, I understand. Oh, you, you did it, you, oh, oh, yeah, that's right, that's right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it yeah. fucks you up. Yeah, Catholic, depending, depending you're Catholic, right? Catholic? Yeah, uh, in Trutilania, most people are Rastafarian, and then the Scientologists tried to come in and take over, so they we just... The castles. Well, yeah. no, we killed them all. We're like, we're not going to have, we're not going to have another Hollywood on our hands, so... Well, bring it, bring that kind of, bring that kind of uh, cleansing here, please. Get the, uh, get the Scientologists out of here, they keep buying up all the buildings and... Death Cat versus Scientology. How, how many people follow that science fiction writer? It don't make any sense because it's like you know it come from fictional book. For Xenu's sake. You know? And I they swear, all wear those, cap, those, those, those uh, skipper hats, you know? The I, Fjord. I swear I've seen them. Though. I've seen like a Scientology armor drive by. Oh, dude, the they, they have no they sense have of the, humor. They have their own military. They have no sense of humor. You think you're making fun of Mohammed, is, is you get, out, get a hard time, but make fun of fucking Scientology. Uh, yeah, that's why I'm like, uh, am I going to get murdered? Like, just like, yeah, this is the end. This is the last episode of this show. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it well, never, they're never seen them again. Uh, on New Year's Eve, actually, I was with uh, Aaron and I went to uh, we were like this building, this party at this building that was about ready to be uh, uh, bulldozed. Well, not bulldozed, but like they dig it all out. It was actually. The, the uh, the office of Ed Wood from the '60s. Ooh, we saw his door. Wait, they got rid of it. They got rid of it. They just just like gutted it out, and now it's like some sort of like hipster hotel. But it was right above the right above the Vista and the Good Luck Bar. But um, where was I going? Oh, on the roof of that place, there was a big Scientology billboard, and we climbed up to the roof. Is that is that the one where the the guys like in the desert playing the saxophone? It's like freedom. No, it's like some, it's like uh, some big uh, big hefty uh, black guy with uh, like it looks like he's like film directing a movie or something like that. It's right there on right there above the, the Vista. Vista. Yeah. Well, at least that's what was there on New Year's. I don't know if they probably changed the sign now. But uh, she climbed up actually on the sign. Sorry, this is Aaron. I'm off camera here. There's a compilation that's coming out that I'm going to be on. And the guy that runs the compilation, he also does. He also works with Fred Kiko on uh, the Demolition show on uh, on KXLU, and I'm going to be doing that in uh, in April. But he's oh, okay. got a new microphone, and I got to do. I've got to do, lay down some better vocal tracks, and I've got a. You know, like I said, I got a bunch of songs for that, and um, I don't have a name for the album yet, but uh, it'll be something. Uh, and I was raised Catholic, so here's to that. Nostravio. Zeit. <laughs> I look like a total boozer on this show, but... Did you check out my videos of Saint Link for? I did, yeah, I did. I, I had the whole playlist going. There's a lot of them. There's a shitload of them. There is, there is. I didn't realize there was that many. Oh, she t Aaron taught me Premiere, so I'm just kind of... Ah. Just, and, uh, you know, the one with the, the Windex, that's actually the building that I work at. Oh, that we work at, that we manage. So we love the building, and it's it's haunted and shit. Yeah, there's yeah. Oh, ghosts. You should come check it, out. check it out. For yeah. Sure. yeah, you should. You haven't been to the spot, have you? Mm -hmm. You should come check it out. Where yeah. is it located? Uh, 414 West Pico. It's Pico and Grand uh, downtown. Mm -hmm. It's it's pretty funny because like when I live down, when I live down there, there is like there's always like nobody wants to come over. It's there's right not, by the handbag there, factory. I guess there's always stuff going on. But now that we move so far away, yeah, you find I'm out always fucking over down. there. You're way out here too, man. Like, like, well, look at this place. It's pretty great. That's, how many people live here? Well, sort of five. Nine of my best guitars have been stolen. Nine of them. Nine of them. Holy cow! Bones. Only, only, only one theft was uh, was two at once. Like I had two stolen at once, but I, but yeah, nine of my best guitars and basses have been stolen. Like I right now, I've just got like a I got a Squire bass. Nah. Don't do drugs, kids. Stay in school. Don't do drugs and stay in school. Oh yeah, Crass Lips has a new tape coming out that'll be here pretty soon next weekend. It's called Don't Do Drugs, Stay in School. 
Actually, I put I them away. Have, have you listened to the new uh, Period Bomb album? No, I haven't, but I used to be in Period Bomb for a moment. I saw, I remember seeing you at Hush Club and also in uh, Cameron's Oh, so you were that, you're at that, that Hush Club show? Or oh, that was nuts, Oh, yes. man, I couldn't even play. They were just pressing, oh, man, I, a girl ripped my shirt off and I had a girlfriend for like a week after that. Like, that was a good show. It, it was. It was fun, but events. it was ridiculous because they, they wouldn't. They were excited about like we couldn't even play music. I tried turning around and like pushing back off the stage, and Period that was Bomb, a wild show. Period Bomb really was like they were in their took, took took Los Angeles by that the show, fucking balls and clips. that show was great, but like also the, the show they had the handbag factory. But I wasn't. I wasn't playing with them. Was this like a few years later? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember. Death Cat played that. That was one. incredible. We didn't get to play till five a.m. Oh, really? Five a.m. It was crazy. Like the handbag band was like. The handbag factory is right around the corner from our. Like if you walk down our back alley, the handbag factory you can see right, right across the street. Okay. We're, we're that close to it. Yeah. I maybe accidentally threw, but not accidentally. Maybe I threw a banana peel in your yard. Uh, as long Before as like, people, people have thrown a, a beheaded duck in our in our alley too. That's not nice. Yeah, it was during Halloween. Something did a curse. It was like a Chinese curse. The devil was there. Yeah, the devil was there. We were just talking about the devil last interview. Let's take a trip into the place. 
Away at the age of 100, she actually she was, she was born she was born right there like off of Vermont like way back a long time ago. Like oh, that pictures, was nice back then. Oh, it was it was there was a front lawn. Like we went down and visited her old house, and it was like it just had bullet holes. It's like it was all painted like stripes of like yellow and brown or, or pink and brown, and it had uh, the, where the front lawn was. There's like the sidewalk went out. I know them. I come back and it's just like completely burnt to a crisp, and I guess my oh, roommates shit. watched it explode. And then later, the guy who lit on fire. He took a hammer to all the windows in the, the other two apartment units, not ours, and just fucking smashed them all out. Wow, that guy was that was really passionate about whatever he was, you know, he was, for he was injured, I don't know. Yeah, I, uh, almost, I almost stabbed the one guy 